girl, what a world, what a light. Oh, I married Joe. What a mind, love is blind, what a white. Joan Davis. With Jim Backus in Why Mary Jo. I'm telling you, he wouldn't mind at all. And I'll prove it. Just as a test, I'll tell him we're going to see my family in St. Paul. And he'll say, great idea, Joan. Just catch that first shot, that's all. Oh, Mabel, Brad's the sweetest, dearest, kindest man in the whole world. Better take this camera with me. Oh, hello, Mabel. Hello, Brad. Hello, lover. Hello, dear. <laughs> Well, I better run along. Charlie should be home by now, snarling for his dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Mabel. So long. Brad. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear. What were you going to say? What were you going to say? Well, I, uh, I, I kind of had an idea about where to go on our trip. You know, I sort of had a thought about that myself. Uh, what do you say we visit my family in Cleveland? What? Well, it's all right with you, isn't it? Oh, sure. But what's the matter with seeing my family in St. Paul? Well, nothing at all, but this morning you asked me to pick the place. In fact, you you insisted. Well, I know, but you told me that I could pick the place. Well, well, and, and you insisted too, Brad. Well, 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 Joni, it's my vacation, and I think I'm the one that should say where we go. You can say where you go, not where I go. Well, let's get this straight. We're going to see my mother. And I say we're going to see my mother. Let me put it this way. I'm going to see my mother if I have to go alone. Well, suits me just fine. And I'm going to see my mother even if I have to go alone. All right. That's the way you want it. <laughs> Dear mother. <laughs> Joan. Yes, Brad? My uh, train for Cleveland leaves at 4.30. Oh. Uh, my train to St. Paul leaves at 5.10. Well, maybe I could take a later train and keep you company until your train leaves. I know how anxious you are to see your mother. Yeah, well, I guess separate vacations won't do us any harm. Some people do it all the time. They say it keeps you from getting bored with one another. Yeah. Maybe it's for the best. I'd like to exchange this Cleveland ticket. Where to? St. Paul, if you don't mind. It makes no difference to me. One place is the same as another. You ought to tell my wife that. Huh? Uh, nothing. Uh, I'd like to get on that 510 train. You've got some money coming to you. Here you are, mister. 4486. I'd like to send this wire. Dear Mother, sorry, but there's been an unexpected change in plans. Unable to come visit you now. 18 words would be dollar eighty-five. All right. Will you uh, get that right off? Be there in an hour. Mm, good. <laughs> I'd like to exchange the St. Paul ticket. For two. Cleveland, if you don't mind. It makes no difference to me. One place is the same as another. You ought to tell my husband that. Huh? Nothing. I'd like to get on that 4.30 train, please. Here you are. Uh, will you send this wire? Dear Mother, sorry, but there's been an unexpected change in plans. Unable to come to visit you now. 18 words will be... Dollar eighty-five uh, plus forty-four eighty-six for your ticket. Will you get that right off? Be there in an hour. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> I need a rest. I go. <laughs> Joni, I'm home. Lover. Sweetheart. Oh, Brad, 
Dad, I've got the most wonderful news for you. Well, I've got the most wonderful news for you. We're going to make the trip together. Oh, isn't it great, Red? <laughs> no more fights, no more arguments. We're going to make the trip together. That's right. Oh, we were so foolish to quarrel, darling. Mm. Say, how did you know we were going to make the trip together? Well, I traded my ticket in. Oh, you traded your <laughs> ticket in. Isn't it great? Isn't it... What do you mean you traded your ticket in? <laughs> well, I, I traded my, my, my ticket for Cleveland in for a ticket for St. Paul. Oh, no. Now, now, wait. Wait a minute. How did you know that we were going together? Don't tell me that you've got a ticket. Well, this isn't my shopping list. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, you got a ticket for Cleveland. You got a ticket for Oh, well, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll run downtown and, and change my ticket back for a ticket to Cleveland. No, no, dear. I'll change mine for a ticket to St. Paul. Well, no, honey. You've had a, been to enough trouble. I'll, I'll change my ticket. No bother, Brad. I'll change mine. Well, honey, let's not argue. We'll change my ticket and visit my mother. No, no, dear. Uh, I'll change my ticket and visit my mother. Well, look, why are you so stubborn? You're being absolutely... Absolutely pig-headed. Me? Pig-headed? Why, you ought to be walking around with an apple in your mouth. Joni, I, I've tried to be nice about this, but, well, I've got a notion to go visit my mother by myself after all. Well, that's fine. And then I'll go visit my mother by myself after all. I'm just going to change this ticket to St. Paul back for a ticket to Cleveland. Wait. Ticket to Cleveland? One ticket to St. Paul. Yep, that'll be 44.86 if you don't mind. All right, I'll be back here next week. Telegram for Bradley J. Stevens. Oh, thank you. What is it, Brad? It's uh, from my mother. What's she say? What does she say? Received your telegram. If you cannot come to me, son, I shall come to you. We'll arrive tomorrow, Mother. Well, lots of luck. <laughs> Thanks again, dear. I'm, I'm so glad you won't be leaving for another day or so. Oh, it's all right, Brad. Well, I would have felt awful if you weren't here to greet my mother today. I'm really grateful. Oh, it's quite all right. By the way, I'd like to have another piece of French toast and some hot coffee. Oh, 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 oh yes, dear. <laughs> of course, dear. Uh, anything else? No. Oh. oh, yes. I'd like a half a cantaloupe. A uh, half a cantaloupe. <laughs> now, make that the right half. The right, yes, dear. Uh, half a cantaloupe, French toast, and coffee. Uh, uh, the door, right? Oh, oh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, yes, dear. <laughs> Mother! Oh, boy! Oh, oh. Mm. Well, we weren't expecting you to later. I caught an earlier play. Oh, uh, Joni! Joni, Mother's here. Let me look at you, son. Oh, you look... Why, Bradley, dear, what's this? Oh, oh well, I was just uh, sort of helping out uh, well, with the housewife. Well, oh, dear, you know you are a judge now. <laughs> Hello, Mother. Hello, Joan. Bradley, you know, you look a little thinner than you did when I saw you last. How are you feeling, Mother? Hello, Joan. You know, Bradley, you've got to take care of yourself. I suppose there's no substitute for Mother's care and attention. Did you have a nice trip, Mother? Hello, Joan. Oh, Bradley, I brought you a bottle of that tonic you used to take, remember? Oh, I'll have you looking better in no time. As a matter of fact, I'll bring it down as soon as I've unpacked. Oh, now, don't bother, dear. I know where the guest room is. Hello, Joan. Oh, I'd like to check. <laughs> oh, look, Joni, I'm sorry. Mother wasn't exactly cordial. She, she wasn't very, very polite. She was pretty nasty. Well, I'm sorry, honey. I think I postponed a visit to my mother so I could be here to greet her. Well, look, honey. If only your mother would do a thing like that. Only your mother would. Oh, I wonder who that could be. I said to myself, if they won't come here, you go there. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> there you are, Mother. Well, <laughs> this is uh, some surprise. Both our mothers visiting at the same time. Of course, Bradley, if you haven't got room for Oh, oh no, no, Mother, there's plenty of room for you. Lots of room for you. 
Lots of room for you. Are you trying to say there's no room for me? Oh, no, Mother. We have plenty of room for you. Would you like some cream, Mother? No. Yes. Oh, this is going to be confusing. I'd better call you Mother One and Mother Two. I'd say that's a good idea, Mother One and Mother Two. And which one of us is to be Mother One? Mm. <laughs> I'd better think of something else. Uh, tell me, Mother, how is everybody at home? Oh, fine, dear. The family's all well. And guess who I saw last week? Diane. Diane Westfield? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's Diane Westfield? She's the girl we all thought Bradley would marry. <laughs> oh, Diane's simply gorgeous, you know. She's got the tiniest little tipped up nose, the reddest of red lips, and her eyes are like two great big, beautiful donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, have you seen Bob lately? Bob who? <laughs> or Bob Jackson. <laughs> you remember he was so in love with me? He was proposing to me all the time. You remember he was so crazy about me? Oh, Bob Jackson. Yes. yes. Have you seen him lately? Well, I was supposed to see him last week, but I was a little bit late. Poor Mrs. Jackson. She was so upset when they took him away. But he was screaming, and they had this straight jacket and a more <laughs> Mother, how do you like our little home? Uh, I think it's very comfortable here. Oh, dear boy. <laughs> you should consider yourself a very fortunate woman, Mrs. Davis. Fortunate? Yes. It isn't every mother who has a daughter married to a judge. That's right, Mrs. Stevens. But on the other hand, it isn't every mother who has a son married to a girl like Joan. That's very true, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> but I'd better clean up a few things here. I... Oh, I'm so sorry, Mother. That's quite all right. It could have been hot coffee. Yeah, it could have been. <laughs> I think I'd better change my dress. I'd better change. Uh, uh, yes, yes, Mother. Come on. You, your uh, closet is the one near the window. Her closet is near the window? No, well, your things are in the hall closet. It's much larger. Hers is larger. Uh, but yours is airier. Hers is airier? Oh, well, I tell you what, dear. I'll have Brad take all of your things and put them in her closet, and I'll have him take all your things and put them in her closet. All right? Bye. Bye. <laughs> This is going to be some week. I feel like a lit match between two sticks of dynamite. Look, Joni, there's only one way to keep peace. Whether it's your mother or my mother, let her have her own way. Yes, you're right. Bradley! Joan! You take the high road, and I'll take the low road, and I'll go middle little, little, little before you. <laughs> He's a big one, too, isn't he? <laughs> I see you're preparing dinner. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mother. A uh, beef stew is one of Brad's favorite dishes. Yes, indeed. I often made it for him when he was single. <laughs> Only we called it meat and vegetable casserole. Of course. <laughs> well, what's that? Cloves. Oh, good heavens, I never put cloves in Bradley's beef stew. Uh, I mean meat and vegetable casserole. Now, Mother, I... Uh, uh... <laughs> yes, Mother, have it your own way. No cloves. No. Yes, Mother. I hope you didn't forget the clothes, Joni, dear. No clothes, Mother. Oh, come, come. What's beef stew without clothes? Don't you dare put clothes in there. I certainly will. You don't know will. what you're doing to put clothes in there. Well, what are you stew? talking about? What do you know about Look, honey, uh, here's two clean pots. Now we can start from scratch. You can each make the stew your own way. Excellent. Good. Then we'll see whose recipe's the best. Yes, and we'll let Bradley be the judge. <laughs> we'll let Bradley be the judge. Yes. All right, girls. Now, shake hands, go to your corners, and come out cooking. <laughs> Why don't we call off this silly beef stew contest? I'm sure they're both good. Nonsense. I'm fully determined that Mrs. Davis shall realize that mine's better. Oh, yeah? Wait till Brad tastes it. Very well, we'll let Bradley say which he likes. I'll go get him. 
Not so fast. I'm used to those little tricks. You'll tell Brad to say yours is best. We'll go together. Tell me, why is everyone so mysterious? What's cooking? <laughs> well, Brad, our mothers each prepared the same dish, and, well, they've been having a little friendly discussion about which is better. I see. And you're going to be the judge, dear. The judge? Wait a minute. I feel like I'm more on trial than the jury. <laughs> Johnny, what am I going to do? Plead insanity. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You're just now. Now, Mitch, it's just going to have it when you were to fall. A little out of my line. Yes. Lovely. Mmm, this is good. Mm -hmm. He hasn't tasted mine yet. Go on, son. This is good, too. Bradley, dear, you're supposed to decide which is the better. <laughs> which is the better? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Right. Well, you know, I don't know. You won't believe this, but I can't tell the difference between the two. I can believe it. Well, I can't. <laughs> Confusing my cooking with a beef stew that has clothes in it. Just a minute. Oh, so why, it's positively barbarian. Is that so? Yes, that's so, Mrs. Davis. And, and if I hear it all from you, you put so apple. Judy, this is awful. What are we going to do? Oh, yeah, I got an idea, Brad. Come with me. Tell me. Johnny, what is it? What's your idea? Well, first I'm going to pack my bags and leave you. Good. And then <laughs> what? Come on, I'll tell you the rest in the bedroom. <laughs> and my mother and my mother's mother before her used that recipe. And by golly, they put cloves in it. Hmm. In that case, my dear lady, and I use the term loosely, indigestion must have been a tradition in your family. <laughs> For your information, my grandfather ate that cooking every day of his life. He died at the age of 103. And after he was dead two days, he looked better than you do right now. <laughs> that, Mrs. Davis, is an old joke. And you, Mrs. Stevens, are an old... I wonder if you take that kind of talk from you, Bradley J. Stevens. As I was saying... This happens to be my house, and I can say what I want. What were you saying? <laughs> About what? You can say what you want, but you can't make me stay here and listen. <laughs> No one can talk that way about my mother's cooking and get away with it. <laughs> I can say what I want after what you said about my mother's cooking. Well, just don't stand there with that suitcase. If you want to go, go. Johnny! <laughs> don't stop me, Mother. I'm going home to Mother. <laughs> Joe! Put that suitcase down. No, I'm leaving Brad, Mother. Oh, Brad, you've got to do something. I'll do something. I'll open the door for her. Oh, no, no, Brad. <laughs> let's not be hasty. Yes, let's not be hasty. Well, I forgot. This is California. We have a community property law here. Half of everything in this house is mine. And I'm not leaving until I get it. Take your share. It's a cheap price to pay. Well, I certainly will. Now, there's a pillow for you and a pillow for me. I'll take this couch. Chair. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That sofa's worth more than these two chairs. I'll throw in the hat. <laughs> no, Mother, I'm sorry. It's much too late after what he said. No, no, I couldn't. I'll take the maple chair. I'll take the table. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. There, there, there's a lamp on that table. Okay, take it. What? what? Abby's mine. Oh, sure, you want to do this. No, Mother, it's, it's, it's the only way. <gasps> The whole desk? Okay. The drawer for you. The drawer for me. The drawer for you. Cards. 26 for you. Listen. Not after what he said about your cooking, Mother. 
never mind about my cooking. Brad is a wonderful husband. There's a pipe for you. A pipe for me. Pipe for you? Community property. Did I make the law? It may choke me, but it's mine. Well, what about that extra pipe? Very Excuse me, Joan, but really, uh, this is... You can have custody of your mother, Brad. And you sit right down there with the rest of Brad's belongings. You're all nice. Book ends. Take one. Thanks. I'll take the television set. But what about me? I'm leaving the radio. You can watch that. Your color radio is coming in soon. You may enjoy it. Bradley, you've got to put a stop to this. What? Well, Mother, after she what she said about your cooking... Oh, the devil with my cooking. Jones be the splendid wife to you. Much better than that snooty Diane would ever have been. Well, she is snooty. Too late. <laughs> There's a woman for you and a companion for me. Glass for you, glass for me. Well, oh, 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 what, what about this bottle of 7-Up? Three and a half each. Right. Oh. Well, I heard about the budget, I guess. Oh, Mother. Keep your eye on my things. I don't trust that man. Oh, Joe. Bradley, Joe. Really, this is ridiculous. All about stupid cooking. What does it matter if she uses clothes? Clothes? Schmoes? What's the Come along now, you two children. Kiss and make up. Come oh, yes. on now. Kiss and make up. Well. Well, all right. <laughs> it's empty. Then the argument was a trick, and we fell for it. But uh, how about that, Laurie? How about that, Nellie? How about that, Bradley? <laughs> oh, you children have certainly taught us something. Well, what do you say we go out and eat that beef stew? And I have a suggestion to make. Let's mix both of the stews together. A splendid idea, both the stews together. <laughs> oh, terrific. Oh, dear. Mix both the stews together. Now, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Tonight's cast were Geraldine Carr, Hal Smith, Mabel Page, Norma Barden, and Struther Martin.